Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Stash Port for the Stash Project. Today is January 4th, 2021, and we start all over again with a whole new year of the Stash Report. Episode 1. We'll see how many we get in this week. Or this week, this year. <laughs> Got 51 episodes last year, so we took a week of vacation somewhere. Uh, we could have taken a week of vacation this week, as we really don't have very much to talk about at all. Uh, there were no kit releases anywhere. Now, Japan has been on vacation since last Wednesday, so that, uh, you know, sort of negates that. And uh, there have not been any of the December missing December kits from round two pop in yet, as far as I've seen. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about a couple of new kits that have been announced overseas. And then we're going to go over the Royal of Germany 2021 list. Usually we make that a separate video, but there's just not enough to justify that. So we're going to wrap it all into one old big video here. It really won't be all that big when it comes right down to it. So let's take a look at these kit announcements. Uh, first up here, domestically, uh, we have... The we mentioned this in the January compilation video, depending on how these are uploaded or there, that this was the Salvino's JR kit for the month of January, and it's going to be the AJ Foyt Racing uh, 1979 Oldsmobile 442, so a new livery in their original new tool kit from uh, two, three years ago now. And it uh, looks like we're at Riverside in this, maybe. Um, I don't see a wall necessarily in the background, and a lot of the other road racing releases that Savio has done in the past have been based on photos taken at Riverside, so I'm going to assume that's where this is from, but if not, so be it. It's still, uh, it is what it is, regardless. In terms of delivery, expect a middle-of-the-month release on that. And then two kits that we saw announced from a new player, if you will, in the uh, market, DM Model Kits. Uh, DM Model Kits is a large vendor based in Portugal. Think Spot Model, think Domino, which is the sort of the vending side of Bell Kits. And they have decided to go into the injected plastic kit business with rally cars, because of course, that's the only thing that's made anymore. <laughs> no, all joking is that rally cars are very, very popular right now, especially. Uh, the 80s, 90s, eh, late 70s rally cars, very, very popular. Hasegawa obviously releases rally cars nearly every month with new decal sheets on based on old kits that they've done or translating new kits that they're doing into rally cars. Bell Kits continues to do well. We see continued uh, rally releases from uh, new, new, uh, whether they be new kits or old BMAX kits with the new branding on them, whatever they are, rally, still very popular right now. And the guys at DM are planning to cash in on that. Uh, based on, of course, what you guys decide to purchase. They've already started planning a third and fourth kit. I don't know if they're going to be more of this kit or if they're going to be another new tool. <coughs> it goes, your money goes very, very fast when you're laying it out and waiting for it to come back. So we'll see exactly what they have planned there. Uh, but these are injected molded kits. They are not resin trans kits. They are not, you know, the alpha models, $180, you know, chunk of resin you could kill your neighbor with type of thing. Uh, so... We're waiting for them to sort of release more details about what they're doing here in terms of who designed these kits, in terms of like the engineering of assembling them again, right? Because all kits need to be broken down from a big car into a small, a bunch of small parts, and then who's manufacturing them uh, in terms of what country it's being done in and what tooling house it might be doing. Uh, if they're sort of piggybacking bell kits a little bit in terms of design and, uh, you know, production, then you sort of know what you're expecting, right? You, you've seen, you know, if you're into rally cars, you've seen enough bell kits, you know what type of kit to, to expect when you get open the box without ever actually ever seeing the contents in person first. Uh, when it's a new company, you're, of course, you know, a little dubious as to, again, what kind of quality you're going to get because some of those early bell kits, kits are pretty rough. This <laughs> this this Chevy Cruze right here is a pretty rough kit uh, in terms of fit and finish and the fact that the molds weren't polished and, and things like that, and that was the first B-Max kit that was done. So it's always, uh, always interesting to see how much a company leans on its uh, brothers in arms, so to speak. Not really competitors, but brothers in arms. So we'll see what they are. But anyway, those kits are going to be a couple of Ford Sierra Cosworth RSs. For people who don't know that car because it is a European Ford, it is a Ford or four-wheel drive sedan. Uh, this was the replacement to the Sierra Cosworth. The, the uh, Tamiya kit, of course, was did as a Group A race car uh, and a JTCC car. 
they also did the S the Cosworth Escort rally car, which came after this. So this sort of fits in a, a spot in between. And they're going to do two different releases of this. Uh, you're going to get a 1991 Monte Carlo rally. Uh, this is the Q8 Oils livery sponsored car. This finished third in the 1991 Monte Carlo rally. And then the opposite release in terms of, you know, two, two this is a very Bell Kits way. That's why I was wondering if Bell Kits is involved here somehow. Where it's another car, the same kit with a different livery. And this is the Autoglass Mobile One livery car that ran the 1992 Portugal rally. That's not all that surprising with a Portuguese company, right? And they finished second in that rally. So those two kits are expected in the first half of this year. There's no real firm release dates. They did tease us the other day with a sort of a three-quarter rear, very close tight end shot of the model built model kit. And it does look like a model kit rather than being a slab of resin. But as far as sprue breakdowns and all the other stuff, we're going to just wait and see uh, and play by ear as to what information they release and when they release it. So... That's your uh, big new news. New company. Always welcome to see a new company joining the fray because, uh, let's face it, uh, you know, new people, always good in terms of uh, the uh, whole idea of, like, uh, we've always done it this way, and then a new company comes in and disrupts. So we shall see what we shall see on that. So let's go over to the Ravel side of things, shall we, as we talk about the kits we expect in 2021. These releases are going to be somewhere between basically next month and the end of next year, so or end of this year. <laughs> Still in 2020 in my mind, right? So sometime between now and, and basically November, December of 2021. I will go through very quickly without pictures the uh, kits that are just reboxes of American kits. So we're going to see a reissue in German boxing of the 1970 Pontiac Firebird, as well as, let me see, get the other list up here, uh, Brian's 1995 Mitsubishi Eclipse from the Fast and the Furious, Dom's 71 Plymouth GTX from the Fast and the Furious, as well as Dom's 1970 Dodge Charger from the Fast and the Furious, as well as the 69 Chevy Camaro Yanko uh, from the Fast and the Furious, and also a reboxing of the Ford GT40 uh, Le Mans 1968, they're calling it a limited edition delivery, limited edition delivery expected in September. And this is going to be a rebox of the Fujimi GT40. Uh, that kit is hard to find depending on where you look for it, but it's certainly not something that's a first run release at this point. Uh, sometimes they re Fujimi reissues it under the veil of darkness and you can find it at Hobby Search and things like that, but it's not something that's normally like available necessarily, so that'll give you another opportunity to pick that up as the uh, year progresses. Now, on the uh, regular sort of kit manufacturing side of things, we did have one kit that is a follow-up from last year. This kit was a 2020 release, and it has not come out yet, not expected until March, and that is this, the Volkswagen T2 bus. Uh, this is a easy click kit, so it's a snap tight kit. Think of the uh, Deutz and the uh, Porsche Junior Tractor in terms of quality. Uh, I've seen a couple of build-ups of this as far as building like this production shot for the box art and things like that, and it looks like a actually pretty nice kit, all things considered. Uh, the doors are molded separate. The whole front end of the model is molded separate. That'll allow them to reconfigure the, the face of the model, if you will, to different ears as far as where the turn signals and the headlights are placed. The rear uh, is separate as far as the rear window and the engine cover. There is parts of an engine in it. It's not a full-blown Volkswagen engine necessarily. It's probably about 8, 10 pieces. Um, and some detail painting will help you pick that out overall. And then there is going to be another version of that coming later in 2021. And this is a camper version of that uh, vehicle. The roof, by the way, is separate, as you can probably guess, with this roof uh, mechanism for the camper being involved. And this will let them put like new side windows in and put that the spare tire on the front, uh, the front of the car in, and things like that. And you know, it's just swapping out bits and pieces of the tooling rather than uh, you know the whole thing. It's very reminiscent of some of those Fujimi kits, uh, the next kits, the snap heights that they did, where the pieces and parts are you know front fenders and things like that are all separate, or the Aoshima R34 Mordor and a couple other Aoshima kits they did with the front fenders, front clip, parts of the rear clip are all separate to allow them to tool it into other things reasonably easy. Uh, a couple other V-dubs while we're on the subject matter, you're going to get a gift set, which usually means it comes with paint and glue and things like that. 
<coughs> for the Magic Bus from The Who. So this is just a reissue of their panel van. And then another panel van you're going to see is the Dr. Akater, or Oekter. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Pardon my non-German non speaking Americanness of that. But this is a very 19, obviously 50s, 1960s version of their livery. They are a multinational food corporation. You guys in Canada might recognize it because I know that they changed over uh, some frozen pizza company they bought up there over to the brand this Dr. Oktar brand, so you guys may recognize that packaging, but that, again, another reissue of their uh, panel van. Uh, one thing we're going to get out of these guys as well this year is this Volkswagen T1, what they're calling a bus, uh, a lot of people call this a combi otherwise, it is the non-23 passenger version of the Volkswagen T1. There is the camper version of this. Remember, we mentioned that. Technically, the camper version has been released, but only in Germany. And for seemingly five minutes, I have not seen any of those kits for sale anywhere in, in a month. They were up and available for like two weeks, three weeks maybe, and then they're all gone. Now, I would assume the U.S. is getting an allotment of those because they were on the Ravel sort of fourth quarter U.S. specific release schedule that we showed you that one day. But they have not got here yet, and when they do get here, you might want to go grab one if you want one because, oh, good, they goodness they went but yeah so this is obviously like i said the non-camper version of the same thing same kit no camper and then let's see here let me look at my list real quick to double to cross reference to make sure we're not forgetting nothing here not a whole 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 lot lot new completely new but a couple of things here to go Another modified reissue based on a brand new tool is this, a Jaguar E-Type Roadster. So this is obviously based off the brand new, we don't even have it in our hands yet, Jaguar E-Type Coupe A, if you will, that they uh, released here not too terribly long ago. This release will solve the problems with that roof, with that uh, windshield frame being a little too low. I love it. You got a Corgi or, or, or whatnot running alongside the car there on the box art with the Georgian Federal Mansion in the background. These people are far too important to even have you build their car, but they're going to let you look at it. Um, mod like I said, modified tooling, convertible specific parts obviously included into this, or the Roadster, however you want to look at it. But that that is expected in April, so it shouldn't be too long before we see that. And then the two brand new tools for 2021. We're going to get another tractor, because why not? And this right here is a Fent uh, D20 I believe is what the designation is, Diesel Ross. And this, I'm not sure it's going to be quite as old as this picture shows, but the fit Diesel Ross was done in the late 40s, early 1950s. It is a, another one of the sort of German, yeah, it's F-20, so it's right there on the front. <laughs> That's what I get for not looking at the picture clearly. At any rate, this is going to be a, another easy click, snap tight tractor in the veins of the Deutz and the, and the Porsche Junior. And Fent, Fun note, is actually owned by an American company now. It's run by, owned by AGCO that uh, is based out in Georgia that owns Massey Ferguson and things like that of this nature. So, a uh, old version of an American tractor. <laughs> oh, not quite, but still. And then the new car kit for 2021 is going to be this. The G was, they are calling it the G model Porsche 911. So the G model is technically any Porsche built after 1974 or up to 1985. These appear to be 1976s, or at least the Targa version is, because that is going to be the other version. There's going to be a coupe and a Targa. And if you go, oh my god, what the hell are they doing that for? Fujimi kits! Uh, yes, Fujimi does make Enthusiast Series G line or G model uh, Porsche 911. The problem would be that the 1974 kit that they do make is a Carrera RS, which is a completely different car <laughs> as far as the, the, the body work and things like that. Then they made a 1975 Porsche 930 Turbo, which was the export version of the 911 Turbo, which again is a turbo version of the 911. And then they made several kits of, 1980, of 1985 Porsche 911s. Turbos, non-turbos, Carreras, Targas, Speedsters, a whole nine yards. Nothing is made of just a run-of-the-mill Porsche 911 between 1969 and 1985. All of the kits that were in between those were special runs or turbo versions. Not all 911s are turbos, and these are going to be the non-turbo version of those uh, kits. Now, I gr will grant you that is sort of shoving something into a hole sideways, but if you're a real big Porsche fan, and obviously Ravel has a Porsche license, uh, 
that is probably something you'd be very, very interested in. Now, the Porsche 934 race car they did is one of those kits that people either hate to love or love to hate, depending on how they feel about the kit itself. Um, you know, I can't really speak to its accuracy. I don't own one, but I've heard complaints both ways that it is, that it's not. And, you know, it's it's one of those things with the people who complain. you got to wonder, you know, what's their agenda and, and things like that. So I won't get into that as uh, I'm not familiar with the kit enough to have an actual opinion on how correct it would be. But that should say, because this question has been asked, is it going to be based off that race car kit? No, because the 934 is a purpose-built Group 5 race car built off the 930 turbo platform. And again, these are non-turbo cars, both the Coupe and the Targa. So they would not be... I mean, dimensionally, they might be. They might be able to use the window glass out of them, but otherwise, it's not the same. I mean, the base engine, possibly, but it's not the same engine completely. Obviously, it's not a wide-flared car especially not like the race cars, but it's not a wide flare car like Turbo is, and there's a number of differences otherwise between the Turbo and the non-Turbo cars, so yeah. Uh, perhaps they were all researched at one time. Perhaps this new tool kit is based off of some of the CAD architecture of the race car kit, but otherwise they should not share uh, any actual tooling between the two. Otherwise it would say reform, which means there's a reissue, modified reissue, which does not. It says new, it says Nuva tool, which is of course brand new tool. So anyway, guys, that wraps up this week. Hope you guys had a great new year's. Uh, nobody did anything silly and, uh, see you guys on the other side.